welcome back to Bunter Jar. Today we have um, the second part of this DCC fitted um, Smoky Joe Centenary Year Limited Edition Special Run, whatever. Um, so they made sort of a couple of thousand of these, so they're not particularly limited. It's only about fifty pounds new, uh, so not particularly uh, expensive. But it's got a few extra details, so little handrails and uh, and the lining and so on. So I was in two minds whether to weather this. If you've uh, been on the uh, community page, you would have seen the post there and also on Instagram. There's been a question, you know, whether, whether you should really be weathering uh, limited editions. And, you know, consensus is, well, it's, it's not really that limited anyway. Um, and it's not particularly expensive. And I think leaving it in a box on the shelf isn't going to make it make uh, make it worth any more um, in the years to come. Not while I'm around anyway. So uh, my uh, my mission in life is to uh, is to weather everything that I can see. So uh, Smokey Joe is uh, not going to be an exception to that rule. So anyway, so what we've done uh, so far while I've been rabbiting away is that we've just used a, uh, a sort of dark brown, um, whatever whatever shade it was. I actually uh, did this a couple of weeks back and I've forgotten what colours I used. But to be fair. Most of the time, when I um, do any weathering from uh, one model to another, I'll just choose uh, you know whatever brown it or grey or whatever colour I'm looking for is nearest to me. I've got uh, a whole selection of different browns. Um, so I'm not sure what this is called actually. Might be mahogany. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, the plan is is that where it says Smoky Joe and we've got the uh, running number 56025 on the side we're going to keep those clear um, so we'll be sort of polishing that back as we go now the Smoky Joe Centenary Year Special Edition Model Limited Run etc etc is um, one of the other features of that is that it's, it's got a, a gloss lacquer so it's quite shiny already so we're just going to keep on polishing those bits back we just click keep them clean of um, of any paint and lacquers and so on so uh, it kind of gives that sort of kind of semi polished look it's just a cheap way of doing it really so we're just going to put a little bit more on and the idea um, as i say behind this is that um, if we wipe it you know with the cotton bud and the cloths it's not going to get all the paint off it's going to leave bits caught around the um, you know any uh, in the nooks and crannies and the joins and where like, bits of the handrail will stick out and so on and that's the idea we want the rest of it to be almost a little bit clean um, and uh, as I, around the around the delivery we want that to be nice and clear If you use something like cotton bud or a um, or a brush to do the larger areas, you, you'll take probably too much of the uh, um, of the paint off. That's not what I'm after. So I'm using the cotton bud for when I want to sort of target an area to keep clean. So like this, this bit here, and the Smoky Joe, and that little badge at the top. That's the builder's badge, I guess. So hopefully you can see what we're uh, what we're aiming for. So we're going to do the wheels as well, and I'm not go too heavy with this. We need to clean this paint off uh, because the uh, obviously pickups going through the wheels as they always do. So we need to keep them clean. So I'm just trying to not get as much as I can on the uh, on the actual contact surfaces, and we would need to spin these wheels over a little bit because those sort of con rods they'll be uh, they'll be protecting summer part of the wheels so uh, we'll have these marks when it starts to run and because this is already fitted with DCC I can't use the 9 volt battery so it's a trick to jump start it and um, move it around so I'll put it on the rolling road in a little bit and uh, just give that sort of half a turn and then uh, we can uh, continue painting the wheels and, uh, and keep those uh, keep those rims clean um, on this one I'll clean them as I go actually just makes it a lot easier rather than uh, cleaning off three or four layers towards the end so we're doing the front and uh, and the rear it's got this nice little red flash on the uh, 
on that buffer beam, which you don't get on the um, on the common cheaper model. But it's not much in actually, about ten, I think. But uh, I just think it looks nice if it's covered in uh, grime, and then we just sort of clean it back to make it look. See, seeing the pol the colour pops out, I like the uh, I like the red sort of popping through that greasy layer. Just want to mention uh, again. I think I've said this before, but these uh, these videos that I put out are really just for you know a bit of fun. Uh, something that I enjoy doing. They're not meant to be you know uh, um, the sort of ultimate concise way of doing anything. Really, this is just what I do. Um, and you know, if people seem to like it, I've got a number of followers now, which is great. And on YouTube, it all goes you know seems very well. Um, so yeah, I must be doing something right, I guess. But this is not the sort of definitive guide to, to weathering. This is the way I do it. And um, you know, there are other ways and there's other great um, YouTubers that, that do the same sort of thing uh, in different ways. And they have some uh, some really good effects. So uh, like I say, this this is my way. Um, I'm not claiming this is the, this is the only way. Anyway, so we've um, we've used a slightly different colour just to add a different um, sort of texture to the top. So we've used uh, a lighter grey, and we're doing the same. We're just cleaning it back. Now, don't worry about those polished bits on the roof; they aren't going to show towards the end because we're going to use some powders and other bits, pieces in a little bit. Um, so it won't appear to be shiny. So that's the main thing. We don't want it clean at the top. We just want the uh, so the, the the grime around those um, you know, around the chimneys and the valves and so on. That's what we're really trying to achieve here. It's just that build up of dirt. So you can use whatever colours you you choose to use. I've decided to use browns and greys in this one. You might have noticed the music in the background is uh, um, I'm trying to sort of match the music sometimes to, to what we do. And if you put the word smoky into um, epidemic sounds, which we use for our music, it comes up with uh, four or five different tunes. And I quite like this this one. So uh, I thought we'd uh, we'd have a listen to this a bit jolly. Hopefully brighten up someone's weekend. Um, it's epidemic sounds. If, you could, if you've got a YouTube channel, it's uh it's actually a good site to use so i just just have a look at that the link's down the bottom um you can use your music uh as many times as you like once you've downloaded that from epidemic sounds So that's most of the uh, that first pass with the paints and now we're using this um, black powder from Humbrol so this is the sort of effect and that's going to take that shine off the top and I like it when locos have got this, um, this sort of thick caked layer across the top I wasn't intending to do this quite as heavy when I started but um, I kind of got a little bit into it I kind of got carried away as I normally do with uh, with my powders, but I quite like this Humbrol um, black powder because it's quite fine and it does uh, 
it will, it will stick really well, it covers really well. So we're using this where you would sort of typically think the you know the smoke would leave that soot deposit. So um, as it travels along, the soot's going to be blown along the top of the uh, the boiler there and on top of the cab. watched these videos before uh, exactly the same um, color weathering powders in there so we start with this um, this dark rust don't want to go too heavy with that one Down the bottom, we're using just the Humbrol Dark Earth uh, weathering powder as well. The links to these are in the description, um, as they are on most videos that we do. The same, uh, there are a few things that we use on everything, um, and the powders um, haven't changed much apart from introducing that uh, the black one recently and um, the green oxide, the chrome oxide, as you can see in the background there. So this is another one from the um, from the Vallejo uh, rust set. So it's like a yellowy type um, powder. I just really like this. Um, once it's blended in, it looks really, really. Uh, I think it looks really nice. I like that. So uh, I'm going to stick with that. And I just want to give that a final clean, just to make sure it's. Uh, Still nice and shiny, or as much as you'd expect it to be for a sort of working loco like this. We don't want it too clean. So there's quite a bit of detail in the back there. I don't know, we won't take this apart, but. Um, we could probably dry brush and catch most of that. Now I don't have uh, um, probably the right colours. I've used this copper. It should be a bit bright. That should be brass, really. It should be a bit lighter. But it's uh, it's going to look okay in there, and it's not going to be that clean anyway. Um, something that's sort of this dirty on the outside probably won't be that clean on the inside either. But anyway, so we dry brush in. So uh, I don't want to get the palette dirty. I can't be uh, can't be bothered with the tiny amount that we're going to do. So We've we'll just put some uh, some of the paint on the brush. We've brushed it all back as far as we can, and then if we go gently across from side to side, uh, across the detail, you can see the paint just leaves its deposit on there, and um, just kind of uh, just makes it pop out a little bit. And there's detail at the back there. You can see it on that front of the cab. We'll try and catch that later. And it just lights it up a little bit. I like that. I'm good with that, I think. And then our final coat is going to be our uh, our matte varnish. This is the Vallejo one that we've uh, we used before. And this just holds all the uh, the powders in place and uh, gives the paint a little bit more durability. Um, just an additional layer Now, when you um, use anything on top of weathering powders some of the effect will be sort of diminished which may be a good thing so I tend to use a little bit more powders than I think I'm going to um, want showing at the end knowing that some is going to be washed away or the color will um, the sort of colors will fade a little bit because of the uh, lacquers or anything any fixer we'll all do the same so you just need to experiment with uh, getting the balance right and that's pretty much um, 
done. So just don't forget to uh, to clean off the uh, the wheels. Make sure you get all the paint and uh, lacquer off the wheels. Otherwise, uh, your Smoky Joe won't be running particularly well. And there we have it. So uh, that's another one done. Smoky Joe, this one's actually now gone to a new home. So uh, I'm deciding whether to do whether my second uh, Smoky Joe. Maybe, maybe another time. I'm sure I will. Uh, just a special f shout out and a thanks at the end of this video to uh, all of the uh, fans and super fans that have now uh, signed up and become uh, one of the members. We've got a special community area. So uh, hopefully I'll see you there soon. Bye for now from Bunter's Yard. <laughs>